Welcome back to the channel and today we got two Civivis to check out. These have just dropped. We have a brand new Civivi Vision FG. I absolutely love the Civivi Vision FG and it's got a different type of pattern on the Damascus. My original one has that polished you know where it really shows. This one's like a black wash finish. They both look nice in their own right. This one also has black canvas micarta that it comes with. And I also have my standard one. So I guess you could see that I really like the Civivi Vision FG. Especially Civivi's version. I like it more than the Wii version because it's easier for me to actuate the super lock. And it's a nice fidgety knife. Excellent utility blade shape. Easy to get the tip down on the thing to so do drag cuts. Fine precision work. And then you can choke all the way up there to get nice control over that edge. Yeah, I, I did some testing with this one just to see how this Damascus performed and to see what it looked like after I was done. And you can see some remnants, you know, of some where it kind of rubbed on the coating, but a lot of it was just the oils rubbed out and no major cosmetic blims or anything after all the cutting I did. Another one that, you know, is fun to use, easy to carry. It's not, you know, it's not super cumbersome or anything. It's a, I would call it medium to large knife at 7.95 inches long. It's got a 3.54 inch blade. And like I said, on this one, it's a Damascus blade. And their Damascus is basically a VG10 Damascus. And it performs really well, especially for a budget Damascus. I like it a lot. It's stainless and it takes a very, very keen edge. This is a Snex design and he has some really, really cool knives out there. Hopefully we can see some more of his designs brought through the Civivi lineup. The knife has just that right amount of belly. I'm able to do those long cuts into cardboard without having to worry about cutting it out. You can use this for food prep if you wanted to because you can get a lot of that in the pinch grip. You can get a lot of that edge onto the cutting board or a flat surface. Yeah, overall, you know, it's a pretty darn good slicer. It's definitely Civivi thin. Now, this one is, you know, at that upper end of the budget territory coming in at $100. Do I think it's worth it? Yeah, absolutely. It's an outstanding knife. The Super Lock is super strong. I even did some spine wax just to just to show that. I already knew it was going to pass just the way this, this lock is done. And you have like a little window in the scales to where you could actually see where the lock is engaging into the little cutout right there in the blade. Really nice there. Next we have a new design. This is the Civivi Vexillum. I guess that's how you pronounce it. And Civivi really stepped it up with this one once again, raising that bar. And it's just very impressive. This one comes in at around $96 for this particular variation. This is the only one that has a non-coated blade. There's two other ones. Both of them have a black blade on them. So if you're not into that, this is the one you'd have to go with. And I, I like this one. Now this is a large knife coming in at 9.06 inches overall length. It has a 3.81 inch clip point blade of Nitro V stainless steel. I like Nitro V just as much as I like 14C. It takes a super, super keen edge. It's a tough edge and it holds it for a reasonable amount of time as well. You do have a small row of jimping. It is functional, especially when you choke back right here, but there's also a forward finger choil that I can choke up on. I can either put my finger in this scoop right here. If I'm gonna hold in the saber grip, that's the most comfortable for me, or in the hammer grip, you can get right up to that edge so you can control your cuts and you can get a lot more power in this manner. Because it's a clip point, you got a nice top swedge that kind of comes down to thin out that tip. You have a nice needle-like point there, excellent for either doing drag cuts or piercing task. This is a low-tipped clip point, which if I'm going to get a clip point, that's the type I like because they're still very, very versatile because that tip sits underneath the center line of that pivot, which means that the belly is going to be very gradual to that tip, allowing you to still get that tip down on the things and it's still going to be an excellent piercer as well. This one has a nice satin finish on the blade, dual thumb studs. When I say they're raising the bar, just they do so many awesome little things that are in knives under $100. Even your thumb studs have some milling on them for some texture and just for some added aesthetic there. They're nice oversized thumb studs, easy to get your thumb on. We'll talk about those later. And you have a mid-height flat grind 
that comes down to around 15 thousandths behind the edge. So it's nice and thin, but it has a whopping 0.154 inch blade stock thickness. So that's pretty darn thick. I'm kind of interested to see how this thing's going to perform. Let's find out. Man, I must say, this is the sharpest Civivi knife I've gotten out of box ever. <laughs> this thing is very sharp, and it feels like it has a good bit of bite. I can't speak too soon yet, but we'll see. Um, I, I like the fact that this clip point has a low tip. I can do longer cuts without fear of sliding out of the cut. And it's nice and slicey. I was a little worried because it has some pretty thick blade stock. Or it's got thick blade stock. But it comes down, you know, to a nice thin thin edge. And with that sharp edge, it's very, very nice. Now, I'm choked up because <clears throat> this is the most locked in. And I'm able to really control that edge. I can see, I can get right up to the, the beginning of that edge. And I'm able to get a lot of force down into this wood. Make fine curls very easily. But I wanted to see, you know, what kind of harder stuff I could do and see how it felt. I was worried that this texture would be a problem, but it didn't bother me at all. Um, <clears throat> I do try to choke back, but choke back, you just don't have as much grip and you're a lot further from that edge. So the the best spot is definitely that choke up spot. Here you can see it right here. It's kind of like a cantilever or whatever. It's pulling me up. Now this is where I really can tell that this edge has a good bit of bite and how sharp it really is by how quickly it bites into this half inch thistle rope. It's uh, nice and comfortable in the pinch grip. It's not requiring me a lot of force and being that it is a clip point, you have that belly, cutting on a flat surface is very, very easy to do. <laughs> it wasn't wearing me out at all. And throughout all the thistle rope cutting, uh, it did not feel like that edge slowed down at all. Uh, we end up getting through 90 cuts before I run out of the piece I cut and there's no doubt about it it could have done more than that and uh, I, I did feel the, the edge after the edge still feels nice and crisp and I could definitely I know drop it back to razor sharp again but you could you could probably do a pointer finger grip on this one um, I, I'm trying to maneuver my hands in a way to where the blister that I have from the last five knives I tested don't aggravate it whenever I'm doing this one and for the most part I'm able to get around it so nothing to do nothing bad to do with the knife it's just my hands are beat up and blistered up from doing these all the time but definitely definitely happy with the way this one performed no doubt and as you can see you can get that tip down if you want to do a drag cut it's uh you know it's not the hardest it's not at a 90 degree angle and I'd probably use the belly. I mean, that's just second nature. Whatever comes easiest at the angle that you're at. But just look how fast it's cutting through all this material. Even that extra thickness didn't really bother me when I was doing that corner cardboard. And when I get to the 10 ounce denim, it still has a ton of bite left to it. So outstanding edge. Hopefully we see more of them like this rather than the over polished ones they used to do. Now let's take a look at the deployment and the action of this knife. And this is another place this knife shines. You have a pretty minimal flipper tab with some nice jimping there to grab a hold of the finger. The flipper is above the pivot line, so you're going to have that much before the blade has to take over. You also have those dual thumb studs that are easily accessible and my preferred means of deployment on the knife. You can easily reverse flick it. You can easily thumb flick it and it comes out with authority with that flipper tab. All three work outstanding because the detent is dial perfection. The VV is very consistent and this one is riding on ceramic bearings with a ceramic detent ball. Watch how smooth this one is. Now a lot of that has to do with the fact that you have a big and thick blade so lots of extra mass to bring that blade down but I mean just look at that. Super smooth, super snappy outstanding action overall then we come to this stunning stunning handle look at that grip that gives you a lot of extra grip it's got that like 1911 grip to it 
You have a very subtle contouring on those scales, softening around all the edges. There's no sharp spots where you don't want them to be. And I was kind of worried at first when I first started feeling the texture. I was like, oh, that might be uncomfortable for my hands, but not at all. And I think the blue black layered G10 looks nice on this particular one. The other ones have solid G10 with the same milling. You have Torx T8 throughout. The only place you have Torx T6 is the pocket clip, and I'm fine with that. They have inset the pocket clip into the G10, along with countersinking those pocket clip screws, so nothing's going to get hung up. And they even put a flat spot underneath that pocket clip, so it's not shredding up the pocket. This one goes in nicely. You have definitely have enough ramp, almost too much, but... Even when I'm choked back right here, I don't feel it at all in my medium-sized hands. We have a black G10 backspacer with this little split geared pattern. It is a little bit above the scales, but I never feel it whenever I'm cutting. And you have a hidden lanyard post in the back right here. Your stainless steel liners have been rounded. You have tons of internal milling there to try to bring down the weight as much as possible, especially with that thick blade stock. Bringing the weight to 6.1 ounces, so it's, it's a hefty knife. I had no issues carrying it, but, you know, some people might not want something that heavy. Lock up on my knife, I'd say it's sitting around 40% or so. Access to the lock bar is good because this comes down lower. You have some texture there. It's not uncomfortable. It's easy for me to get my thumb in there, no problem. Nice solid engagement every time. No play at all. This thing's got very, very tight lock up. Now for some size comparison, as you can see, it's a big knife. It's, it's a little bit bigger than the Sencut Glide Strike, and it's a good bit bigger than the Civivi Praxis Aluminum, which is bigger than the original Praxis. It's a good bit bigger than both the Ontario Rat 1 and definitely the Rat 2. Man, I really struggled trying to find something close to the same exact length, and these are the closest I could find. We have the Artisan Accelerator, and we have the Miguron Full Size Valona. Now for my nitpicks and complaints, it's not lefty friendly, not something that really affects me, but I understand we do have lefties out there. And I, I do wish they would have went with a little bit thinner blade stock, even though this thing performed on another level. I, I can't really be mad at it, you know, I, but it would have performed even better with thinner stock. That's a lot thicker than most of the stock they use. But other than that, you know, I think it's a very attractive looking knife. If you're looking for a big bruiser, especially a clip point, then this might be the one for you. I've been enjoying it. I'm glad they're doing some larger knives. Um, I, you know, I've been enjoying my larger knives quite a bit. You know, like I said, this one is a little bit heftier than most of the ones I've been carrying, but I had no issues carrying it. It's nice and comfortable. Love that texture on the G10. And of course, I love the newest Civivi Vision FG. Both of these are outstanding knives. If you are interested in either one of these, I will have them linked down in the description. They will be affiliate links, so if you want to help support what I do here on this channel, that is the pretty much the only way to do so. All right, guys and girls, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave those down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute, absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace. Ah, shwap, shpaw.